Hello everyone, welcome to bmodeler.com. In this video tutorial, we will be discussing a simple IKEA product, which is a bookshelf uh, from this object, uh, which I took it from the IKEA website. You'll be able to make it as parametric family and we'll be placing this uh, inside the project and test it out. So uh, it is going to be a parametric family like this and you'll have the parameters. So with that, let's start the tutorial. And if you are not subscribed, you do subscribe and we are making a series of tutorials about creating families and different BIM softwares. To start a new furniture family, you can go to families new and you'll be able to search for a furniture family template uh, in this place and you can select open. So once the family template is open, you'll be able to go and check the category which is in furniture, this right and close the background view and you'll be able to insert your image. So for in this case, I'm going to make this family. These are the images. You will be able to see that there is a, a book self which is having the top frame and the side frames and the front side we're having a curled uh, shape edges. So these are the dimensions I took from IKEA uh, website. We will be able to using this uh, uh, side views to model this object. With that, let me minimize this and copy this location of this object and I'll be able to go ahead and select this image to the rivet. So make sure, so the plan view going to be a top view. So we have to use the left side view. So I'm going to the left side view and I'm going to insert the image, insert image. The image will not be visible in the project. It's okay. And I'm going to select the family. I mean the image and select open. The image will be attached to your hand. You can place it wherever you need. I'm going to place it here and I'm going to select the image. I'll be using the scale command. And we know that this is going to be a 30 centimeter from here to there. So I'm going to select the first click here. Second click on the right side. And this is going to be 300 millimeter. Enter. And once the scaling is done, you'll be able to move this image down here. And you can draw a shape like I'm going to draw this to the front side here. Create similar or in the floor plan, you will be able to draw the required shapes for me. I need a reference plane this side, this side. And I need a reference plane here. I'm going to draw objects in this area. So I'm going to make a dimension. We are making an equal constraint dimension after making the continuous dimensions. So this is going to be our width and this is going to be our depth. So whatever the elements. Go to the front view or left view, create a reference plane and this is going to be our height constraint. I'm going to assign a parameter here. Height. And going to the floor plan. And as I said, this is going to be our width. This one. Depth. And I'm going to the left side and see what, the, what will be the value. So I'm going to assign this also at 30 millimeter or 30 centimeter or 300 millimeter. Now we can simply align this reference image to the right place. Using the move tool, I'm going to select it and place them like this. The image is only for reference. So we will be able to uh, make them parametric. So it will be easy for us to make it. The height. If I see that the height will be 106 centimeter, so I can select this reference and I can say 106 centimeter. So automatically it will take the unit as millimeter. So once it is done, so we will be able to use the same reference image. I'm going to make the extrude. The extrude will be uh, using a line or rectangular object, whatever you need. And I'm going to start with reference 
from here to here to here to the end here. Once it is done, use the fillet and make it like this. We'll be having the uh, small cutout in that area. And I'm, if I'm finishing it, we'll be able to have the families as um, normal constraint. If you need a proper constraint, use the align command. Align it like this. And with each reference plane, make a dimension from this reference plane to this line. We'll be able to have the a dimension and lock that and the bottom align it with the reference plane lock them in this place we have to use the dimension and use the lock time once it is done so we are drawing it at the center of the family you know that so if i go to the plan view you will be able to see that the pink lines will be the center if you need to set the plane you will be able to set pick a plane okay you will be able to select this plane and going to the left. Now, if I go back to the floor plan, the pink line will be on the left side. If you finish from the pink line, so on the left side, so it will be 250 millimeter. In our case, I, I like to keep it as a, a small, a thinner line. So I have to measure it in the other view. So I'll go back or I can measure it this shape. I can go back onto the left side and I'll be able to measure this thickness of the plywood like this wait it comes at 18 millimeter I'll be able to select this and say 18 millimeter the same profile will be available on the other side so I'm going to use the uh, create similar or I can mirror it um, in this case, I'm going to create the extrude. I'm going to set the work plane, pick up plane. Okay. To the right side, it says open the left view. It's okay. Use the pick line option and use a tab key multiple times until then you select the boundary of the object like this. And if you need, you will be able to lock them one by one. If you want to avoid locking one by one, you can go back and take the pick line option again use the lock symbol here and tap the keys and by default whatever the object it comes it automatically locked with that object so in this case i'm just finishing it going to the floor plan now the object is extruded on the right side and we need minus 18 millimeter so that it comes in into the model and I'm going to go the to the left side again and we are going to use the extrude in this place create extrude from here once it is done you'll be able to use the uh, multiple options like align and uh, dimensions you'll be able to constrain them properly with the line dimension with the reference line and I'm going to make them lock on the bottom we have to make a dimension from the bottom reference line the sketch and use the lock symbol finish it Going to the front view, you will be able to understand that this object extends from one reference to the other reference. So it is extending from this place. So it is supposed to be minus 18 and it goes till or to the other side of the object. And Let me set the work plane of the object. Edit. Right. 
and the floor plan, set or plane, this view, the work plane will be set. I'm going to finish this, going to the floor plan. Now, if I'm extending this um, 250 to the right side, I'll be able to simply lock them or otherwise I can leave it like this and leave it like this. Use the dimension to lock them. Once it is finished, go to 3D view. Make sure that you have done it, done it well. It is well. And go to the floor plan. I'm going to make a two extrude object. One is for the top, one is for the bottom. And we may need it in the middle. If it is required, you will be able to add multiple extrudes. To add it extrude here, like in this place, it's going to cover, if you see the image, it will be covered the inside portion of the object. So let me go ahead like this. I'll be locking it in multiple faces like this so that the constraint remains in the same place. And if I finish it and going to the 3D and see the object, it comes from the floor plan level and we have to keep it in the front side view at some certain heights. We can select it so it comes under till this faces. I can move it like this. So this height it's going to be for this much, which is nothing but uh, 80 plus 18 or 15, so 90, 98, like this. I'm going to use the constraint and like this. Change the scale to minimum value so that the dimensions looks better. Lock it. Now, when you are doing a constraint, so make sure always stretch it and see it, it's constrained properly when you are doing at the beginning itself so that the constraint changes, uh, locked it properly from the beginning. And we have to do the same thing at the top side. So I'll be able to uh, create a new one or I can create the, uh, another one object. Like I can go ahead, create similar. I can use the pick option and make sure it is locked here and I'm selecting or tab key like this finish this time uh, I need to set the work plane in the top so that the object comes in the top side let me go to the front view let me tell you what it is edit work plane the front view set the work plane pick a view from here now if I finish it, if I go to the front view, the extrude object will be, will be from here. So we need to uh, start it from minus 18 and it ends in zero. We have done it uh, perfectly, uh, all the corners. We have to cover the front side and we have to cover the uh, middle. If you need any space, you will be able to make it on the middle side as well. Let's go ahead and create one object for middle. So let's create the reference plane like this. I like to keep it always in the middle. So I'm going to make it equal constraint like this. And I'll be going ahead and create similar by right clicking. Create similar. Set work plane. Pick a plane. OK. Select the reference plane. Use the pick and then use the tab key and the all four sides locked. Finish it. Now, if I go ahead and see it in 3D and make it fine and realistic, the object looks like this. And we will be able to change their height as 18 millimeter like this. And we can go ahead to the floor plan. The only thing we left with is handle or the door frame front side and we'll be able to do it in multiple ways uh, one thing is that to uh, draw the inner face and do it or 
draw the um, external frame and do it there are two things we have to do it as per image if you see it so i like to do it the frame first and inner in internal portion as second um let me go ahead go to the front view and i'm going to create a sweep object i'm going to use the existing faces so i'm using this pick path option i'll be using this side and this side and the bottom side like this we can use the trim and extend to finish like this and finish the place edit the profile the front view and we can draw any shape we needed we can even draw our own shapes like this because we don't have any reference of the object I'll be drawing like this and maybe if you need you can make a bowl or chamfer in this place use the trim and extend to finish the object once the profile is ready you'll be able to use the finish button like this and we will be having the object like this go to the floor plan again and if you see that we have a space for our internal extrude object we will be able to go to the front view even and we'll be able to see the thickness like this use the extrude and use the pick line option I'm going to use the tab key multiple times see if it comes in and otherwise I will be picking manually one by one finish it go to the flow plan and I'm going to touch it myself fill this face that's it we have done the object like this and we have to have only the handle object and we have to assign the material select all the objects and make sure that it is selecting only the solid click and add a parameter material and going here i'm going to apply a paint white color paint material i'm not sure about the uh, plywood what is a plywood it is applied I'm going to create new material rename white paint and I'm applying the white color nearly white and the reflection will be there a small portion like this apply that's it once it is done you will be able to change the sizes so it's since it's a parametric you can change it um, before that i need to create an object is extrude in this place or in this place based on your handle i can go ahead to extrude set our plane the plane this side and I'm going to draw a shape like this at front side and I like to keep it nearly center of this object I'm going to enable this center mark use the align key I'll be aligning with this object if we need we can align it with this place so that it constrained the center always if you need extend the size further like this and finish it it is coming as 250 millimeter thickness you don't need 250 you may need it both like 50 so this handle can be changed at any time uh, to any shapes for this moment time and i'm creating like yes 
object small object to represent the handle okay that's it so we have done the family with parametric options we can go ahead and change the parameters so for example two meters and the handle remains in the same place and we will be able to change the depth to 500 and we can use it for any purpose it's an ikea product so we can place it at different sizes at different models i hope this tutorial helped you thank you so much for watching this video do share it with your learning friends i hope this tutorial helped you and if you're not subscribed do subscribe otherwise you will not forget this tutorial and uh, you will not remember anything about the Revit family take care bye